In our politics lead, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, chairman of the Ju Ju Judiciary Committee and strong ally of President Trump, just invited special counsel Robert Mueller to testify before the Judiciary Committee if he has any issues with how Attorney General Bill Barr initially handled the release of the Mueller report. Let's go right now to CNN Sunland Sarfati on Capitol Hill. And Sunland, Graham sent a letter to Mueller, and he brought up one particular section of testimony from Wednesday's Senate hearing with Attorney General Barr. What was it? That's right, Jake. This relates to a phone call between Bill Barr and Robert Mueller that Bill Barr talked about during his testimony up here on Wednesday. Barr told the committee on Wednesday that when they spoke on the phone that Mueller told him that he did not think that the four-page summary that Barr provided to Congress was inaccurate, but Barr said that Mueller told him he was unhappy specifically with the media coverage of Barr's summary. And of course, that is a much different tone and much different substance than what we all now know from the letter that Mueller sent to Barr outlining his complaints. So the chairman of the committee, Lindsey Graham, is essentially um, saying, go ahead, um, Robert Mueller, come in and refute the point that the attorney general made under oath here. Graham says in his letter, quote, please inform the committee if you would like to provide testimony regarding any misrepresentation by the attorney general of the substance of that phone call. But, but Jake, it is very unclear at this point uh, what Graham specifically means when he says provide testimony because he has been repeatedly adamantly against Robert Mueller coming in to testify before his committee. So still unclear what form that takes. All right, Sunland Sarfati on Capitol Hill, thank you so much. I want to get to uh, whether or not Mueller will testify in a second, but first, Elliot, let me ask you a question. You're a former Deputy Assistant Attorney General at the Justice Department. The President said this decision about whether Don McGahn, his former White House counsel, uh, should comply with the subpoena from the House Judiciary Committee to testify. The President said a decision will be made on McGahn testifying in the next week or so, but he obviously signaled that he does not think he should. Um, can the President stop McGahn, who is now a private citizen, even though he was his, his White House counsel, from testifying? Right, he can kick and scream, but Don McGahn is a private citizen. The president certainly doesn't want him to testify. But here's the thing. The president's trying to have it both ways by claiming to be the most open and transparent uh, president in American history and then manufacturing these claims on executive privilege that are actually quite thin. He's waived a lot of them by disclosing the substance of his conversations with McGahn. Most of them were waived once the report got submitted to Congress and submitted to the public and so on. So he doesn't really have much of a ground to stand on. He can kick and scream, and it's sort of like rolling it out like a TV preview. I will yeah. make the decision in a week. Make the decision on it. You've had plenty of time to think about it. But and, and the other question I have for you as an attorney is, um, McGahn obviously testified and, and cooperated with Mueller. Yes. Um, and in that area, obviously, uh, executive privilege was waived. Um, can he now invoke executive privilege, whether it's McGahn or President Trump, given that it was waived once before? No, because it was waived once before, it, and, it, and it would extend to another proceeding. The other thing is we're confusing, I think, and the president is pretty clearly confusing the difference between the special counsel investigation and Congress. It's not functionally the same. So the mere fact that he testified before doesn't preclude him from going to Congress. But again, it, it's sort of like, you know, it's the privilege you have with your spouse, right? It exists... You know, what, uh, one, if once one of you waives it, you can't it's then gone. exert it in another. It's like the, right. invoking the Fifth Amendment. You, all the above. Once, once you invoke you it, it, it's, it's gone. A, you can't unring the bell. Um, right. Let's go back to whether or not uh, Mueller should testify. Take a listen uh, to President Trump earlier today asked if he thought the special counsel should testify. Mr. President, should Mueller testify? Would you like to see him testify? I don't know. That's up to our attorney general, who I think has done a fantastic job. But Barr testified earlier this week he has no problem with Mueller testifying. Right. And I think the president is making the, the last part of that is the most important to the president because I think he's he's basically signaling to the world that he thinks Mueller is going to make the best decision as it relates to him, whether or not that is true or not. Whether Mueller think, will or Mueller Barr uh, I'm will. I'm sorry. Barr will make the best decision yeah. as it relates to the president. Uh, we don't know if that is true or not, but Barr has already indicated that he has no problem with it. He sees that as, uh, as sort of par for the course. Uh, it has actually gotten to a decision point yet, it doesn't seem. But uh, when he's up against that decision, it'll, it'll remain to be seen. And I think it's clear President Trump doesn't want anybody testifying any more on this subject. He said repeatedly he thinks this case is closed and that giving any more to Democrats only fuels these investigations that he calls harassment. And so I wouldn't be, you know, what what's interesting to me is how the president's relationship w with Barr might mm -hmm. change if Barr does allow Mueller to testify or, or simply doesn't stand in the way of it. Yeah. Um, Lindsey Graham, uh, what, what's, he, what's he doing here? It's, it's interesting <laughs> because he had said very clearly yeah. 
this is done. I'm over. If the Democrats want to do it on the House, that's their thing. But as chairman of the Judiciary Committee on the Senate side, I'm not going to do it. But now he's saying, Mueller, if you have anything that contradicts what we've heard from Barr, you can, you can come on in. Uh, well, I... I'm assuming he's doing this because he must think that Mueller's not is going to back up Barr. I, I don't think Lindsey Graham has any interest unless something has shifted in his thinking in, in making uh, the attorney general look bad or make the president look bad. And so, but what doesn't make sense is that the letter clearly states the problem. So it's in writing. Mueller took the time to write this letter to say what the problem is, and he didn't say anything about media coverage. Now, it's possible he said that the media coverage wasn't accurate, mm -hmm. but that wasn't his primary wasn't complaint, letter. right? His primary complaint, which he took the time to write down, um, was had nothing to do with media coverage. I, mean, I just think, I mean, the House of Representatives has, has in my view, an absolute obligation to hear from Robert Mueller uh, in a formal hearing. I think they have an obligation to hear from Don McGahn. Mueller reported that McGahn said that the president urged him to lie about something, and uh, first to fire Mueller and then to lie about it. Uh, the president has denied that. The House has to see what the, how, what the truth is as well as they can and have McGahn testify. And certainly, I think the House Foreign Affairs Committee has an obligation to call Secretary Pompeo at the beginning of next week and say, what is our Venezuela policy? <laughs> it's Venezuela it's policy. not a joking thing. Yeah, I mean, no, we, we encouraged a rebellion there. People are getting killed. We've worked very closely with allies to try to put pressure on the government. We have sanctions. This is like an actually important foreign policy matter. And actually, I would say on this one, more than most, the administration seems to be working fairly coherently, so far as one could tell, in one until direction. Today. Until today. And now the president has really called it into question. And there are people going to the streets in Venezuela, and then they hear the president say, no problem with the Russians and no need and for... And on that point, Sarah Sanders was literally just asked about the, the disconnect between Pompeo and the president on this. And she says, well, the president's just repeating what Putin told him, uh, which is, goes back to the original problem. Why is the president simply repeating what Vladimir Putin tells him?